Okay, folks, if you did the last tutorial with me, you have set up a augmented reality application in Unity. If we press play, we're gonna use our webcam. And once the webcam is active, I can move it around and when it sees our image target, it is going to show the virtual content, which is our astronaut. Okay, I'm gonna put that down and now we're gonna try the next step. Whoa. The next step is going to be, now that we know that it works and it's working on our, our computer, we are going to push it to our iOS device. So I have been working on a PC and if you have a Mac, you can push it to an iOS device. If you do not have a Mac, you will not be able to push it to an iOS device. But I have been working on a PC and if I go to File, Build Settings, there is an option for iOS. And what I can do is I can build the application here and I can then take it to a Macintosh and push it onto my device using Xcode. So I'm gonna walk you through those steps. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to switch to iOS. We're currently, there's this little icon which is the Unity icon next to Windows, Mac, and Linux. And when I click iOS and hit switch platform, it is going to recompute or recompile rather a whole bunch of the scripts. And then I will have a project that can be pushed to an iOS device. Now, here's the tricky thing. I have had a number of things go wrong when switching platforms in Unity. So this is always a stage where I say, make a sequential backup. So a sequential backup is you know, where you save it and you set it aside and then you start working on the new version. Uh, <clears throat> Unity automatically saves quite often. So this would be an opportunity for you to go into your folder and make a copy of your project and give it a number. Um, I like to name it by the year and the month and the day so that I remember, oh, that's the one that I was working on yesterday or last week. So let's say we were working on a real project. I would have done that here. Because this is just the tutorial and it only took me 20 minutes to put it together, if I lose this, I'm okay. But you, when you're doing your actual project, make sure you make a backup before you come to build settings before you select iOS and before you hit switch platform. That'll take a little bit of time as it reprocesses everything. Down here in the left, you can see something in yellow. Something in yellow is a warning. Something in red is an error. I can double check that I don't have anything else in red by hitting console and I can scroll through all of this and yep, I have a warning before I engine requires a minimum iOS version of 14. Um, I haven't actually set that. I'm not, because this is just the tutorial, I'm, I'm not terribly worried about this. Um, I've already, already done a test run actually, which is why that was so fast. If you're doing yours, it probably took a little bit longer. But now I can go ahead and say build. And that is gonna prompt me with a location that it would like to save. Um, I've got all these projects that I'm working on in Unity, but I have a folder that I like to save things in for building, which is called builds. Uh, I go in here and then I create a new folder for this project. There you can see my, uh, my test build from earlier. And now I'm gonna do SP 2023 AR, I'm gonna call this build two. I like to just double click to go into that folder and then say select folder. And now it's gonna go through this whole process of building it. The last time I did this, it was pretty quick. So we're just gonna let it go through that whole process. Okay. And this is what I wanted to see at the very bottom. Build completed with a result of succeeded, 34 seconds. I think the first time that I went through this, it was 134 seconds. So if it takes a little bit longer for you, don't worry about it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the place where I save this, which is in my build folder. Here it is. I'm gonna copy this to my Mac 
which for me means plugging in my USB thumb drive and copying it over. And we will be right back with the Macintosh. Okay, folks, here we are on the Macintosh. Probably sounds a little bit different. I've gone ahead and copied over our build folder. So it's now on my desktop. And I have Xcode on this machine and I'm gonna open it. If you do not already have Xcode, you can go ahead and get Xcode through the App Store. It's from Apple and it is specifically for writing code for, for iOS and for Macs. It is free. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, open a project and I am going to navigate to my desktop where I can locate this build folder and I can open it up. Now, while it's opening up, I'm also going to grab my phone. And if you've never done this before on your phone, you're gonna to need to enable developer mode. And the way you enable developer mode is to go to your settings, to go to privacy and security. And then if you scroll down to the second to last thing is developer mode. And you wanna turn that on. And once you turn it on, you're gonna to have to restart your device to enable that developer mode. After you've restarted your device and it's in developer mode, you can go ahead and plug your iOS device into your machine. And then we're gonna to have to also do something on our machine here. So under Xcode preferences, we need to make sure that you're using your Apple ID in order to have a certificate to push things to your device. Um, so in my case, I have that all set up. Uh, this is not a developer account. You should not need to pay the $99 a year developer fee in order to do this anymore. Um, it's super exciting that uh, anyone should be able to do this for a few devices. Uh, and you can go to manage certificates uh, and make sure that you have a certificate that's on this device. And once that is all set, and I know that I have a device working, or a certificate working on this Mac, I should be able to, to push this application to this device. Now, uh, right now, this is saying the name of my phone. Yours is probably saying any iOS device. Once you have your phone plugged in, it should show up here and you should be able to go ahead and select it. And then it will start indexing and processing the files. I have a warning here that I might just take a look at. Okay, so I have a problem authenticating my Apple ID. I'm gonna go ahead and say view accounts. Looks like it's all set here. So we'll, we'll figure it out um, once we actually get into it. Um, there is a spot in the application where we need to give it a little bit more information about the signing. Um, last time it popped up when I went to push this. So let's see if I can go ahead and just push this and get that same pop up. Build failed. And it's giving me this error. I'm going to click that error. Signing for Unity iPhone requires a development team, select a development team. So I'm going to click that, which then takes me right here where I can then select my team, which is based on my Apple ID. Also, it's good practice to give this uh, a, a name, which responds to who you are. Ideally, it's to your web address. Um, I am not, this is not my web address, but I'm going to use this for right now. And I should be able to push this again. And it's going to go ahead and start building. This will take a little bit of time, so we might fast forward the video. OK, folks, so the Xcode has finished pushing the application to my phone. I'm going to pick up my phone and it is working and it recognizes that image and it populates it with our astronaut. Fantastic. 
There we go. All right, so we have a fully functioning application that I have pushed from my PC to my Mac and then onto my iOS device. Let me know if you have any questions or any run into any problems in the comments and I'm more than happy to help you out.